Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for boxing news and views from around the internet. The former cruiserweight champion Lawrence O'Coley, who's moving up to heavyweight, has signed on with Frank Warren. So leaving his promotional arrangements uh, at Boxer, joining Frank Warren, who seems to be uh, the kingpin at the moment in terms of the Saudi cards, for heavyweights at least. So what we'll do is we'll go through the press release and then a few thoughts, because O'Coley, he joins what I'm calling a baker's dozen at Queensbury. So we'll come to the stable in a moment for a quick comment. But first, the press release. As you can see here, the new signing a graphic. Uh, Akoli, a former cruiserweight champion, also had a, a bit of a stint at Bridgerweight, which I don't cover or count on this channel. But anyway, so the press release proper. Frank Warren is delighted to announce the signing of former two-time world champion Lawrence Akoli to a promotional agreement. The 31-year-old, known as The Source, or aka The Octopus, uh, teams up with Queensbury in tandem with his decision to campaign at heavyweight and relinquishing his WBC World Bridgeweight title. Gross. Uh, he won at the first uh, via first round stoppage of Lucas Rosansky in May. Lawrence Acoli previous reigned at Cruiserweight where he was WBO World Champion from December 2020 and established his dominance over three successful defences before succumbing to a current champion Chris Billum Smith in May of last year. I think people forget that. At a certain point, Akoli was looking pretty dominant at cruiserweight and probably was the number one cruiserweight. And this is prior to the emergence of Jai Opataya. I think Opataya is clearly the number one at the moment. The 2016, Euro, uh, 2016 Olympian turned professional in 2017 was formerly British Commonwealth European and WBO international champion. Akoli says there is only one place. If you're a heavyweight in Britain or the world, it is the Warrens. They've got the best up and coming heavyweights, the best current heavyweights and the best who are on their way out. And actually, he makes a really good point there. And I actually did a video on Patreon covering this uh, recently that Warren Stable, which we'll come to in a moment, has a bit of everything. They are planning for the here and now, but there's also a little bit of succession planning in place. So he says it is the place for me. It has gone through different phases in my career and I needed to find a home that would cater for this next period, right to the end of my career, which is the heavyweight dream of being a three-weight world champion. I'm a natural for the weight, right from being on the GB team, I've been struggling with making weight, and when you have success, you keep on pushing it. I even had to come down to make bridge weight, so I knew it was time to go up. I'm thrilled to add Lawrence, and this is Frank Warren, to our burgeoning heavyweight ranks here at Queensbury, and I fully expect him to increase our successes in the marquee division. Lawrence possesses all the attributes to make a big impact at heavyweight and will relish being released of the burden of cutting weight, allowing his natural talent and power to shine through. There are so many exciting fights and options out there for Lawrence, and I'm so looking forward to getting him started again. Frank Warren, his new promoter. So Lawrence Acoli joins Frank Warren. And we'll just quickly go to the Warren Stables. So go to queensbury.co.uk and fighters. And the heavyweight uh, stable, which is continuing to grow almost by uh, the week, it sort of seems, because there's been many recent announcements. Uh, so you have, and you can see here, this is um, Tyson Fury, Daniel Dubois, Joseph Parker, Zhang Jilei, uh, Joe Joyce, Derek Chisora, Fabio Wardley, Moses Itoma, uh, Lawrence Acoli. And it's interesting they've placed him here because um, uh, I guess sometimes it sort of seems like a bit of a, a depth chart. Uh, where they're sort of placed in this. Uh, he's ahead of David Adelaide, Solomon Dakers, another recent signing in Vladislav Serenko, and Boma Brown, who has been with Warren for a little while, but has only really just gone up on the website because uh, people had been asking, didn't that guy sign with Warren? And yes, so 13 heavyweight stable, and it's clear that you've got you know four guys in the top 10 and probably four more in the top sort of 25. Then add um, Lawrence Acoli, and I think he is going to be a guy... Um, adding to the mix six foot five and if he's at a more comfortable weight and it, as he's getting older it's going to be harder as he said to cut weight make weight so it made sense he was going to be coming up to heavyweight at some point 
and to be honest I think it's probably overdue he was really tight at cruiserweight and if he was saying he was tight at bridgeweight it's probably a, a year or two overdue but I guess he had a few different things that he wanted to achieve and now he's come up he was if you remember when boxer double x uh, signed on with sky he was one of their marquee signings but the problem sometimes for a Coley has been uh, sometimes he'll look fantastic and then other times uh, Lawrence the Octopus Akoli returns where uh, basically uh, the holding is just incredibly bad and sucks the room out of a vent uh, sucks the air out of a room and uh, the holding just becomes egregious there's been plenty of fights I'm sure you that you can remember dating all the way back uh, to 2018 remember there was the Isaac Chamberlain fight terrible a few others you can probably recall where Akoli with his holding and it's going to be harder for him to do that at heavyweight just because some of the guys are going to be more on his level in terms of height and weight. He may not have the natural advantages in certain fights. He's not going to be the taller guy. He's not going to be the heavier guy. And potentially he won't be able to just tie up and uh, have that sort of physical strength to wrap a guy up and hold him there when he doesn't want to fight. So one thing that we've seen at Cruiserweight, he has been one of the best spoilers in the game when he's had to tie up, when he's felt the need he had to tie up. I don't know if that's going to fly as much in the heavyweight division, but in terms of coming up, we've seen um, Okoli at different stages, cruiserweight, and then more recently, the loathsome bridgeweight. You know, the guy can punch. And if he continues, you know, to carry and hold the sort of power, which I think many people think he should, he is going to be able to do some damage at heavyweight against certain opponents. I don't think he's this one hit a quitter style puncher, but he's got heavy hands and I think he can do some damage. And if you were to um, say at some point, have him face even some of the guys on this list, because I think sometimes, you know, there seems to be an expectation. You join a, a stable and you're not going to fight guys in your stable. It'll end up being everyone else. But with the advent of the Saudi cards and Frank Warren being at the heart of it, especially in the heavyweight scene, some of these guys probably will end up fighting each other probably more frequently than they have previously, because one loss doesn't necessarily move you out of the picture if you have a good performance. But I guess Frank Warren's got to do something for a Coley first up that is almost like, a, I would say, an introduction fight, uh, fight, a showcase fight of sorts. I mean, you could probably say it's not going to be one of these guys on this list. He might get a bit of a, a soft serve straight up, um, a European guy with a padded record that he can go in there, look good, and hopefully in the next couple of months they don't want to sort of have it in six months i mean i sort of thought an interesting fight that could be just to sort of get a bit of a barometer of where he's at at heavyweight would actually be with david adelai i thought that would be very interesting or even solomon dakers you know have that sort of domestic level heavyweight clash just to sort of see where coley's at he would be the heavy favorite to beat both but i'd be interested to sort of see that and then sort of step him up incrementally from there you don't need to sort of try to put him into 50 50s immediately but also do we need to see him against the padded europeans you know i could give you know maybe the first fight but apart from you know a Coley having maybe a gimme first up we want to see him in, in some competitive fights to su see how good he is I mean there's been all this talk about what he might be able to do at heavyweight and now we're going to get to see it and Frank Warren with the Saudi cards and the expectations that you know good I mean especially for Coley I mean we've seen uh, make a parallel to someone like a Joseph Parker who's got a couple of points decision wins on um, Saudi cards and it's almost like he isn't being invited back so if a Coley goes out there and spoils things to death in the ring you know he could be at risk of not being in the in the frame so there is going to be a bit of a burden of entertainment on a Coley to deliver because if he stinks out the room he probably won't be invited back so it's going to be interesting to see who they match him with and um what opportunities he's going to get i'd expect maybe first up maybe on a british uh, warren card and then on to a bigger saudi event in 2025 i guess we'll see what do you make of it all lawrence Akoli up to heavyweight joining frank warren drop a comment loud enough and hit like hit subscribe follow me on twitter boxing underscore squared i'm out